Hi, I'm Paula from Paula's DIY Decor and welcome to my channel. I'm the crafter from Down Under and today I'm super excited to share with you how I made this beautiful chinoiserie inspired welcome sign and wood bead garland. I have three super easy DIYs to share with you, beautiful blue and white home decor that you can have in your home all year round. For this first DIY, I want to share with you how I made this beautiful chinoiserie ribbon. You're going to need some white ribbon, some blue and white napkins and some Mod Podge. Now my white ribbon is a white burlap ribbon and the napkins I've had it in my stash for quite some time and I am getting a lot of use out of it. So here you can see me ripping out some of the design. I've already peeled away the layer. There, this uh, napkin is a three ply napkin and I've peeled away the layers until I got to the print. And then I used my hands to gently rip around the design from the napkin. This allows the jagged edges to blend a lot more seamlessly into the white burlap ribbon. And then using your Mod Podge, or I then use the Mod Podge to put a dab down onto the burlap ribbon just to start to stick the design down. And then I finished off the design with another coat, a nice generous coat of Mod Podge, just to ensure it's nicely glued in here. And here you can see the burlap ribbon with a beautiful chinoiserie design. It's a gorgeous blue and white design. It's cost me next to nothing because I already had the materials on hand and it looks absolutely stunning. So for my next DIY, I wanna share with you how I made this gorgeous chinoiserie inspired blue and white welcome sign. Going to need a wooden round, some blue and white napkin, some Mod Podge, some florals, a welcome sign and some blue masking tape. Now I wanted a three panel design on my wooden round, so I just using my masking tape, I just eyeballed it, but it's roughly two thirds and a third in terms of white paint. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And I just used my regular house paint that I use for all of my crafts to paint the top panel and the bottom panel a nice gorgeous matte white. And then once it was thoroughly dry, I took off the masking tape and then brought my napkin to the round, peeled off the layers till I got to the print and lay down some Mod Podge because I'm going to now decoupage the bottom panel that I had painted white with the blue and white napkin. And this is what is going to give me that gorgeous decoupage design. So once I lay down the napkin, I just gently pat it down and then make sure that I pat it right to the corners because with that beautiful soaking of the Mod Podge, you should be able to gently tear away the napkin on the edge of the wooden round, nice and clean. And all I had to do was then go back with some sandpaper. I just used a nail file to give it a nice clean edge. Now the sign that I have is a gorgeous welcome sign. I absolutely love this script. I had it left over from some uh, printing that I was doing using my Cricut. But if you don't have a Cricut, no fear. Just, you can use a texture, you can paint a welcome sign, you can use um, black, blue, white, whatever takes your fancy. You can even stick on a welcome sign or use a rub-on transfer that you can pick up from any stationery store. Using my transfer tape, I just popped the welcome sign onto the center panel of my wooden round, the part that I left nice and natural, and it came out looking really beautiful. Now to just fix up the edge of my decoupaged napkin, I just used some yarn that I had on hand. It's a lovely uh, sort of creamy white color. And using my Mod Podge, I just uh, adhered the yarn onto the edge of the napkin, just to give it that nice clean cut finish. I then layered Mod Podge all across the wooden round just to protect it from the elements when I hung it outside on my door. Now here you can see me using some very small wooden beads and some hot glue because I decided to add some further embellishment to the wooden round. I thought it would look really nice to have wooden beads all around the edge of the wooden round. The hot glue unfortunately didn't quite work as well as I wanted it to. So I used some of my extra strong well bond glue and I put a dab down on my working surface and it was much easier 
using these little pincers to dab it into the into the strong glue and then add it to the edge of the wooden round. Then I let that set overnight and then in the morning they were nicely beautifully adhered on. Now using the wooden uh, using the ribbon that we had created in our first DIY, I'm now going to start to create a beautiful bow for the top of my wooden round. If I wanted to be very specific about how this bow would show at the top of the round, I decided to create the bow piece by piece. So creating the loops, I cut the loops to the size that I wanted for the round and using some hot glue, started to adhere the loops together. I also created my tails separately and shortly you'll see me starting to put the entire bow together. This way, the design of the beautifully decoupaged chinoiserie blue and white uh, napkin would really show at the top of this wooden round and I really didn't want to miss any part of this design if I had made the bow in the normal traditional way twisting and turning and tugging onto the the tails so once you've created your two loops then I decided that it needed extra pop so I used some more of the leftover white burlap ribbon that I had and also some of this beautiful sheer uh, dark blue ribbon and I created a brand new design by hot gluing the dark blue ribbon onto the white burlap and then having that sit behind the chinoiserie design just to make it really stand out. So here you can see me starting to create the bow on the round itself using some of my hot glue. Now by placing the double bows on a slight angle to each other, then you start to create a nice interesting bow and of course you get to showcase each design with a chinoiserie design at the front. Using the tails, I also wanted to create some extra interest there as well. So I tucked the tail in underneath the bow using my hot glue and by putting it on an angle, I just created a bit of a loop and then I just stuck down the, um, the pointy end to the side of the wooden round. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And I just thought that gave it some really interesting creative design. To finish off the bow, I just used some hot glue and I stuck down some of this beautiful blue hydrangea that I had on hand from a previous project. And you can see why I, I wanted to construct the bow separately. Uh, I wanted to leave enough room in the centre because I already knew I was going to use this gorgeous blue hydrangea and I think it just made that bow look super elegant, super gorgeous and really matched the sign. So to finish off the sign, I just then used some more of that beautiful white yarn and I created a loop and then used my hot glue to stick it down at the back so I could hang the wooden round and welcome sign off any door or shelf or wall of my choosing. You have it a beautiful chinoiserie inspired blue and white wooden sign with a gorgeous welcome it's absolutely stunning i thoroughly enjoyed making this one i thought it was 
It's clean, it's crisp, it's fresh, you can use it all year round. It's so pretty, I absolutely love it. Next, I wanna share with you how I made a beautiful chinoiserie inspired blue and white wooden bead garland. This was super easy to make. Any DIYer can make it. If you're new to craft, this is the one to start with. It's absolutely stunning and looks great in my home. So you're going to need some white ping pong balls, some a blue and white napkin, some Mod Podge and some twine. Now using the uh, tip of your hot glue gun, because the ping pong ball is a very soft plastic, it was very easy to make a hole. And these two holes on either side of the ping pong ball are where you're going to string your twine through to make your garland. So of course, like the other DIYs, you're going to use the blue and white napkin to start to create some really interesting uh, chinoiserie inspired balls. Normally you would find these balls, I, had, I do have another um, uh, DIY that I made in an earlier project, which was uh, some ceramic chinoiserie in, uh, faux balls. I'll stick those in the description box below, but I thought I would take that idea and I would create this beautiful wooden bead garland to match the rest of the blue and white decor that I have in my home. So once you've pierced the holes on either side of the ball, you're going to create, I think I used about eight or 10 uh, balls. And then I cut out my napkin design, just the different parts of my different napkin to make each, wooden, uh, each ball different. And you're simply going to take your Mod Podge, lay it onto the ping pong ball, and then you're going to adhere each design or parts of your paper napkin straight onto the ping pong ball. Now I did cut out the different pieces of the design to try and make each ball look different, but you don't have to do that. You can just cut uh, big swathes of the napkin and just glue it straight on all the way around and not worry too much about it. The creases do tend to kind of flatten out once the glue dries, but I just wanted to do to go that little bit extra. You don't have to do that, but I did and I thought it turned out really well. So go ahead and cover up all of your ping pong balls with the blue and white napkin. Again, don't forget to strip away the layers of your napkin until you get to just the ink side. And then using your Mod Podge, just layer the napkin all around the ping pong balls. So here you can see I've finished all of the decoupaging of my ping pong balls and I let them dry nice and thoroughly. And now we're going to move on to creating the garland. So using your twine, I just use some of that blue masking tape to create sort of like a needle point so I can string the twine through the holes of the ping pong ball and the wooden beads. Then I created a design using a wooden bead a ping pong ball, a wooden bead and a ping pong ball. You can create whatever design you like. You can use more wooden beads if you like. I just used one wooden bead in between each ping pong ball and I thought um, that was just enough of a design to my liking. So use the twine to string through and create that garland. And then once you've finished creating your garland design the way you like it, just tie off the end so that the twine doesn't slip through and then undo your entire garland. And then we're going to make a beautiful tw uh, twine tassel. Next, we're going to make this tassel out of the twine and you're just going to wrap your twine over. I just used my little paint tray and I wrapped it over, I don't know, maybe 25 times. And then once you've, made, you've wrapped and made 
your tassel circle then you're going to uh, get an extra piece of twine and tie it off around the top this will create the top part of your tassel tied in a nice a very very tight knot so that the tassel doesn't come apart and then using your scissors you're just going to cut off the bottom and it's to fray out the bottom of the tassel and then just straighten up your tassel with your scissors. And using the end of your garland you're just going to tie that onto the tassel so it's all nicely put together nice big tight knots cut off any loose edges and there you have a beautiful chinoiserie inspired garland with wooden beans in between to give it that extra bit of interest and dimension and I thought they turned out absolutely stunning If you're liking this video why not subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. If you're new to this channel a really big warm welcome to you and if you're returning to my channel thank you so much for coming back and of course all of those beautiful subscribers that leave me those wonderful encouraging messages I sincerely appreciate them and they absolutely keep me going. Well, that's it. I've put it together now, the beautiful chinoiserie inspired blue and white home decor, a beautiful welcome sign, a gorgeous garland, and of course your chinoiserie inspired homemade ribbon that you can make using just a few items that you've probably got on hand. I hope you've enjoyed this video series. I've absolutely loved putting it together. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.